So the first thing that we'll do is we'll crawl the website using Screaming Frog. And what it will do, you click on the visualization option on the menu and it will give you this crawl tree graph. So what this gives you is every single page from an architecture hierarchy point of view. Once we have that, then what we'll do is we'll take that and we'll put it, I like to use Miro, we'll put it into just an, an org chart style page mapping. So we see what all the, the pages are. Here's a screenshot of what it looks like in Miro, just homepage, the pages, blog, blah, 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 et cetera. So once we have that, then we go through this very simple process of reviewing the website's architecture. Now, I wanna say this, if this is a franchise location, then this can get complex. There's gonna be a lot of locations, a lot of pages. We actually have a franchising client that has 150 franchisees. So there's a lot of pages, there's a lot of things going on, but but for the most part, 99% of you guys are gonna be working with 30, 40, 50 page websites. So this is not that complex. Don't overcomplicate this. I'm gonna give you the simplest way to do this. So questions to ask once you have this kind of mapped out, does the website have service, product, practice area, pages, targeting locations? And I'm gonna break that down for you in a second. So let's say this, if you're an HVAC company in Miami, there are, HVAC is a general category. Personal injury is a general category. Massage therapist is a general category, but there's gonna be sub-services that people are searching for within that category, AC repair, duct cleaning, stuff like that, those are services. If you're a personal injury attorney, slip and fall, car accident, trucking accident, et cetera. If you're a massage therapist, there could be like foot massage, head massage, whatever that looks like. So you wanna do the keyword research to understand what people are searching for, and then make sure that you have corresponding service pages for that. And those should be localized because Google wants to see that you're servicing those local places. Again, for multiple locations, because that's where it gets a little bit tricky. Uh, are they using correct folder structures? Does the website have the proper targeting, homepage, locations, et cetera? Are they creating relevant support content on the blog. So for law firms, for example, we'll do, if it's a Miami based DUI attorney, we'll do like what to do, like Florida laws for DUIs, like what to do after you get a DUI in Florida, because it's Florida based law. So just supporting content on the blog that again, shows Google internal linking purposes that you're servicing this area. So now let's talk about the proper structuring for every location or market that they're servicing, they should have a page targeting that main location and keyword. So for example, if it's a personal injury law firm that has offices in Miami, Boca, Fort Lauderdale, three locations, what you'd wanna do is you'd wanna set up a subfolder for that location. So Miami personal injury law firm would be the slash Miami page. That would be the main keyword targeting that page. Then underneath that, you'd wanna set up those practice area pages. So Miami accident, slip and fall, Uber. Each of these would be titled Miami. So Miami accident lawyer, Miami slip and fall lawyer, Miami Uber accident lawyer. And then also for all the different markets that they operate in. So Miami and then Boca. So you literally just make a copy of this folder, a copy of these pages. They don't wanna be exact copies. You do wanna customize these based on the location. You want it, and I have a content section here that we'll get into it, but like, unique titles, 80% unique content in terms of customizing that to the page. But for the most part, accident law is gonna be accident law in Boca, Fort Lauderdale, Miami. So it does not feel 100% unique, but you wanna do your best to make these pages unique. So that's for multiple locations. General best practice, use a subfolder for the location. And again, on that subfolder based page, it's gonna target the main keyword. So the main keyword is if the umbrella term, again, if the umbrella term is massage therapist in Miami, then this page would be Miami massage therapist. And then the sub practice folders, head massage, foot massage, shoulder massage, Miami. So they fall under the relevance of that page. And then same thing across location. Now, if it's a single location and they, plan to stay as a single location, then you can set them up either with the location modifier in the URL or just as the naked. I like to go naked personally because it's not a big deal. Now, again, of course, so you might say, okay, they're single location now, but in two years, maybe they add another one. Maybe they want to move to Boca and we didn't set up the subfolder here. That's fine. It's really not the end of the world, guys, if you don't have the subfolder. So it could just be something like this. You just make the other ones Boca. Again, ideally you'd have the subfolder, but I personally would not go through and do all the redirect and stuff like that. This is more like perfect case scenario. If you're setting the site up from scratch, then they can add Boca just like that. So after that, if there's any actions off the back of this, we just record them again, cover this in the foundational sprint in terms of our content workbook and in terms of our action file workbook. If there's any technical SEO that needs to be done, we always record it in an action workbook. We send it to the development team, set up the re, et cetera. So that is how to set up the site structure. So when we talk about having a local landing page, that's where this is covered. Now let's talk about content optimizations. Again, inside of our program, we have a whole section here for content marketing. We go into much more detail, but for the sake of this bootcamp, let's just dive into this here. Most of our clients, they don't have these practice area pages set up, or if they do, they're not well-written. So the core of the content that we create, a lot of people are, are asking me more about this now, Somebody asked how many blog posts. We don't really do that many blog posts, to be completely honest with you. 
we just we don't because again the gbp is the most important part we'd rather spend time and effort getting links and reviews for that than hammering out blog content it's, it's just a kind of a waste of resources now so during our sales process we're basically saying does this client have the necessary service practice area pages and if not how many do we need to create so we're walking into this campaign pretty much knowing how much of this content that we need to write but essentially we have content briefs already built for these this is like the content brief template that we use you can see what i have written in here and you guys can use this as a guide but we do so many of these and again this is another benefit of working with a single type of client we've done so many of these practice area pages that we don't even need content briefs anymore the writers just know exactly what to do they know exactly how to write them they know exactly how to change them and customize them and make them unique so if you don't know this is a little process on how to do keyword research for it how to fill out that practice area page template 1200 words is a little bit light we usually like to go 2000. again somebody just asked about the blog post again here so when we're scoping out a campaign let's say right now i'm pitching accident law firm in texas they have five locations locations, Dallas, Austin, Fort Worth, two other cities. Their website only has single practice area pages. So they have a homepage and then they have practice area pages for slip and fault, the general ones, but they have five Google business profiles and we want to obviously attack those local markets. So we need five sections on the website set up to support those Google business profiles in each one of those markets. So that basically means if there's 10 practice area pages and they only have 10 of them written, then we need 40 more to, to make those five locations. So we need to create 40 pieces of content for them. So when I say not that many blog posts, do you think it's more worth your time to spend time creating bottom funnel content, like a practice area page or a service page, hammering out top 10 reasons to hire a law firm or top 10 reasons to get a massage? Who's really gonna convert off of that content? They're not. We wanna do things that are gonna keep the main thing, which is generate leads and generate cases for our clients, because that's how we make money. When they make money, we make money. So when I say not that much blog content, it's because most of our clients don't have this content done already. And we're going to prioritize this content over blog content because we want to make people money. So these pages need to be 100% unique. Hire a writer to do it. Everyone should have a writer or at least be really good with AI writing in order to do it. So I have in here for premium clients too, that we will modify these practice area pages to include review stars and then add schema in and then add in a table of contents, et cetera. When I say premium clients and clients that are paying us like 20 grand or more a month, because again, these are small things, but they're nice to have, but it's always good to get those review stars to pop through. Okay. So final piece here, again, blueprint members, we're going to be going deep into these and other boot camps. Schema impact is very minimal, but it's worth doing. So local link building here, there's three types of links that we like to focus on. One is going to be your local aggregator websites. So Facebook, Yelp, Foursquare, GBP, and traditional local citations. So these are like your traditional local links. Citations and that profile optimization process I talked about handle that. SERP ranking websites, so fine law, super lawyers, et cetera. Again, just like I just showed you with Angie's list, you wanna build a list of those websites and you wanna build profiles on those websites. So those are two simple things that you can do that any VA can do for you. Type three would be manual outreach links to local-based websites. One, we pretty much just use link vendors for a lot of links, especially for traditional SEO. But now that we have specialized in working with law firms, we've been able to build this database. So what we've done is we've hired a VA to go through and prospect to build a list of both local websites and legal websites that accept links, just literally just hired a VA off of Upwork to do this. Filmed a video that said, this is what we want you to do. This is how you can do it. And then record them in the spreadsheet with all this stuff. So we've got directories in here, reviews, state, outreach links, a whole bunch of stuff. So we've also then started the outreach process with the same VA, just send this template and find out if they accept links and if so, how much. So now we have a database of websites for local link building. So when I talk about doing manual outreach, I'm not doing custom prospecting in Miami. We're just hitting up this file. Again, I'm breezing through this local link building. I'll answer questions on this because we have so much content on link building inside the program that you can check out. I'm doing boot camps on link building, I'm content marketing, I'm doing boot camps on the technical SEO one. So this one, I'm going to be covering this in two weeks. So make sure to show up for that boot camp or just watch the recording. What happened. Thank you.